Back to the Future. Could it actually happen with a real time machine? Because I thought, if I could go back in time, I could see him again and save his life. One concept that has captivated people for centuries is time travel. The mere thought of the possibility of traveling through time, whether to go to the past and relive some memories or to take a peek at the future, ignites curiosity and sparks the imagination. This fascination with time goes way back and is the background for modern blockbusters like Interstellar and Marvel movies. While some people greatly doubt its feasibility, there are intriguing stories of individuals who claim to have experienced it firsthand. Could time travel truly exist? Join us as we embark on a riveting journey to unravel the mysterious possibilities of time travel. Time, time travel. Time travel. Time travel in time travel. The Missouri time traveler who vanished after 1997. Mike Markham, a 21-year-old electrical engineering student living in Stanbury, Missouri, wanted to build a time machine in early 1995. He had this strange goal of getting rich by going to the future and getting winning lottery numbers. He had no real formal training in that area of study. He did most of his experiments in his house's backyard, which was very messy and could be easily mistaken for a dumpster for home appliances, with parts of old TVs, radios, and CDs scattered all over the place. As he was messing around with a device called Jacob's Ladder, he noticed something strange. Mike was tinkering with Jacob's ladder, which he had modified. It had a home-built electronic transformer with a power of 20,000 volts. He had to create this transformer because the standard household voltage in the US is 120 to 240 volts. He used wire hangers and lasers for the conductors on Jacob's ladder to heat the air around the conductor and take care of air pressure and temperature changes which could easily ruin the experiment. While working with the device, Mike claimed to have seen a circular vortex eight inches across. He figured he would test the effect by repeatedly throwing in a sheet metal screw to see what would happen. According to him, every time he threw it in, something bizarre happened. The screw would disappear, only to reappear a second later, a few feet away. He had the opinion that the metal screw had been transported through time, reappearing when time had finally caught up. Seeing what had happened with this experiment, which seemed to be an obvious success, Mike was determined to push further with his goal. He would build a time machine that would be 8 feet instead of the 8-inch Jacob's ladder, which he had used for the initial experiment. But a great challenge stood imposingly ahead of him. He required an insane amount of power to advance his research to the point where it could work for humans. Furthermore, things didn't seem to go his way because the device went up in flames while he was scaling up his work on the so-called time machine. Mike was unbothered, though. He reasoned that using bigger transformers to produce higher voltages would be more sensible if he were to rebuild the machine. But that would set him back around $20,000 per transformer, but money wouldn't stop him. So what did he do? He broke into a local power plant and stole six old transformers to continue his work. If he thought he could avoid the police, then he was grossly mistaken. The moment he attached the transformers to Jacob's ladder, he sparked a massive blackout on the streets in his neighborhood, shutting down the electrical grid for several hours. Soon after, the cops found their way to his home with a warrant to search it and they took him into custody for stealing the Transformers. During his trial, Mike reportedly admitted to the judge that he was attempting to find the lottery-winning numbers to raise money for a research facility. After his release from prison a few months later, he became quite a well-known figure on local radio by sharing tales of the missing screw and his ambition to create a time machine. Art, the host of Art Bell's radio show, the radio show that frequently touched on paranormal topics, quickly labeled Mike a madman and happily took up the moniker. The strange tale of Madman Mike is documented on the radio station's website. While on air, Mike informed Art and his audience that he needed more money and spare parts to conduct his research. He even went as far as broadcasting his phone number live, 
after which he supposedly received non-stop calls from different people for the next three days. His next machine invention was more ambitious and powerful than the first, thanks to donations from his listeners. He intended to use the device to test it by producing an electromagnetic vortex large enough for a person to walk through. When Mike returned to the radio show a year later, he was asked what he would bring along on his supposed time travel journey. He indicated that he would just bring his phone into the time machine. In 1996, when he appeared on the show, he claimed to be 30 days away from completing his legal time machine, so people waited for the outcome. In 1997, however, he suddenly vanished without warning and was never heard from again, placing him at the center of one of the greatest mysteries involving time travel. Not long after his disappearance, one radio show's listeners called to share an odd tale they had stumbled upon. The tale has it that police discovered a deceased man on a California beach in the 1930s. The man had been crushed to death inside an odd metal tube, and a strange object that resembled a cell phone had been discovered next to his corpse. But strangely enough, Mike seemed to reappear online in 2022, refuting wild rumors that he had died after traveling to the 1930s. Furthermore, there were reports that his local radio station interviewed him for the third time in 2015. In February of that year, Mike appeared to post on a blog about paranormal activity using the username Real Madman Markum. The user had been registered with the website since 2015. According to him in his post, rumors are blaming that he was dead, not well, and had time traveled to 1930, somewhere where he died on a beach in a tube. He claimed that whoever posted those pictures of a redhead was also not him. Some school kid had used his name, which someone long ago attributed to me. Whatever was found in the 1930s was not him, and even though he read that it was debunked, he couldn't find the article. When asked about his future intentions for a time machine, in his response, he said he indeed had plans, but they were stalled until he could get some inventors. He said he had some 24 V panels in his bus for a project. They got a little rusty from sitting outside for a bit. While his followers have urged him to prove that he is the actual Mike Madman, he has yet to provide any. As such, whether the real Mike Markham still exists is still a mystery. While some people waved the whole thing off by speculating that the guy had just changed his name and chose to live a low-key life away from the spotlight, some others believe his experiment with the time was successful. Many scientists do not believe that time travel is possible, but in theoretical physics, several hypotheses and theories suggest that traveling through time may be doable, but with some major challenges. The Sudden Slowing Down of Time One prominent theory supports the possibility of time travel. According to Einstein's theory of general relativity, time is fundamentally linked to space in what is popularly called space-time. When particularly massive objects get near gravitational fields, they can cause the slowing down of time, known as time dilation. This phenomenon has been demonstrated by experiments involving atomic clocks in fast-moving planes or strong gravitational fields. Certain exotic solutions, such as closed time-like curves or CTCs, have been proposed to help people travel back in time. CTCs are hypothetical space-time loops that allow objects or people to theoretically travel to the past and return to the same place and time where they started. The Gödel metric, one of the solutions to the general relativity equation, suggests the possibility of rotating worlds that could support CTCs. However, this does not mean that CTCs, as a solution, are without problems. CTCs give way to paradoxes, such as the well-known grandfather paradox, in which individuals prevent their existence or create illogical conclusions. Solving such paradoxes requires careful examination of the consistency and causality of space-time. By way of solution, some physicists at MIT have created theories suggesting the use of quantum teleportation and post-selecting what a time traveler could and could not do as a way to avoid the grandfather paradox, 
but it is still very theoretical. Another level of difficulty for time travel is quantum mechanics, a fundamental concept in quantum physics. The uncertainty principle, also known as Heisenberg's indeterminacy principle, suggests that there are innate limitations to the accuracy with which some pairs of properties, such as position and momentum, may be simultaneously known or measured. Certain interpretations of quantum mechanics suggest that there are alternate timelines or parallel universes where every potential outcome of a quantum event takes place. There are more scientific hypotheses than ever that add credibility to the possibility of other universes existing in parallel to our own. Still, one of the most controversial scientific theories is the multiverse theory. The cosmos in which we live is incredibly huge. There are galaxies with billions or trillions of stars within them. According to some scientists examining models of the universe, the universe may be 7 billion light years in circumference. However, certain scientific theories have investigated and, in some cases, validated the idea that there are worlds outside, parallel to our own, that mirror our own, and go beyond what is visible to us in the physical time we live in. Various arguments about multiverses and parallel universes are frequently discussed with other important scientific theories, like string theory and the famous Big Bang theory. It is important to note that these concepts do not support the idea of intergalactic travel, as that is largely seen as impossible. But even if intergalactic travel was somehow possible, would that be considered time travel? Even with these fascinating theories, there have been several other obstacles in the way of time travel. One such obstacle is that the energy requirements for time travel pose significant challenges because current technology is not at the necessary level, particularly for traveling through CTCs and exotic matter. While time travel to the past requires wormholes, time travel to the future would require traveling at the speed of light. The reason both kinds of time travel are so challenging to achieve is fairly simple on paper. Mankind has not advanced to the point in technology where we can make objects go faster than light, and there are no working wormhole machines. Also, travel theories often hammer on the need for negative mass or energy, and neither can be found in our universe. Although some physicists have theorized the possibility of a time machine that does not need negative matter, that machine would still need more energy than the entire universe could hold. Furthermore, the idea of quantum gravity is largely theoretical due to the absence of supporting data and our limited understanding. Regarding time travel, we constantly deal with concepts and energy that we do not even understand, let alone use. Time traveling ideas are far more complex than we currently understand. As such, Time travel, even as a scientific consideration, is more or less speculative. There is simply more to time travel than just hopping in a time machine, punching in the destination's date, and zooming in on some distant past. Despite the lack of undeniable scientific proof that time travel is possible, there have been notable stories of people who claimed to have accidentally traveled to a time different from theirs. Sir Victor Goddard, the man who accidentally traveled to the future, it was said that Air Marshal Sir Robert Victor Goddard accidentally traveled four years into the future. In 1935, while serving as a wing commander, Sir Goddard was tasked with examining an abandoned airbase in Drem, Scotland, relatively close to Edinburgh. Sir Goddard observed this base from above while flying and noticed the place was a huge mess. He saw that cattle were grazing on wild grass, growing unchecked through the numerous cracks of the tarmac. The airbase was completely deserted and was in terrible condition from complete neglect. Sir Goddard encountered a strange storm while flying his biplane. Strong winds and storm clouds with a strange brownish-yellow hue overtook his aircraft. This bizarre phenomenon caused him to lose control of his plane, and it began to spin into a fall. However, with some effort, he managed to gain control of the plane and flew out of the storm into brilliant sunlight. A horrible stormy day suddenly turned into a calm, beautiful, bright day. As if that wasn't weird enough, he also observed that the ruined airbase, which he had previously inspected, was now in perfect condition and was no longer deserted. 
he saw some mechanics in blue coveralls working on yellow planes parked on the runway. However, the strange thing that left him utterly confused was that the aircraft were different from those the Air Force had in 1935. Interestingly enough, Sir Goddard needed to learn to identify one of the planes. It was completely beyond his understanding. How could any renovation work have been completed in such a short amount of time? The surprises were not over. These mechanics were not even wearing the standard khaki uniforms that mechanics in the military wore in 1935. It was also confusing that the planes were yellow because the Air Force painted all its planes silver. Sir Goddard must have made every effort to explain away the unusual experience, but when he returned to Drem four years later amid a European war, he was in for the shock of his life. He saw exactly what he had seen four years earlier at the airbase he had inspected four years ago. He saw the same mechanics in blue coveralls working on the same yellow planes. He even found the plane he had not been able to recognize before, the Miles Magister. Many skeptics have said that Sir Goddard must have gotten confused. They believe he landed somewhere else in 1935, not at the abandoned airbase in Drem. But that does not explain away the many details of his incredible story. The Miles Magister, for example, had its first flight in 1937, two years after Sir Goddard had seen it on the runway in Drem. The colors of the mechanic uniforms and the planes were only in use years later. The strange storm that suddenly went away and revealed a bright sunny day. All these points to a supernatural experience that cannot simply be explained away. Sir Goddard was one of many people who claimed to have traveled in time. Another accidental instance happened when three people claimed to have seen a time traveler in the past. The Odd Occurrence On Highway 167, Time Traveler a story by Ken Mo was published in Strange Magazine 2. According to that short story, on October 20, 1969, a man known simply as L.C., alongside his business partner Charlie, was driving from Abbeville, Louisiana, where they had lunch, along Highway 167 towards the oil center city of Lafayette, Louisiana. It was exactly 1.30 p.m. on a beautiful day, with a clear blue sky and a cool 60 degrees Celsius. As such, they had the windows down and were in cruise mode. While driving down the free highway, they noticed a slowly approaching vehicle. They thought nothing of it until it got close to them, and they noticed the car. It was rather strange. Seeing the old turtleback type auto, they were immediately intrigued. Now, despite looking like an antique and a relic from the past, the car was in brand new condition like something you would see if you visited an antique showroom. Curious about this car, L.C. and his business partner looked at it as they drew closer. They noticed it had a large orange license plate that distinctly stood out with the year 1940 plastered on it. They immediately figured this kind of antique car could not be legally allowed on the road, except perhaps for ceremonial purposes. L.C. took a closer look at the driver of this vehicle, and was surprised to see that she was a young lady in really strange clothing. She wore a vintage dress from the 1940s, complete with a hat adorned with colored feathers and a fur coat that looked so out of place in 1969. A small child in a large, heavy coat and cap stood on the passenger's seat. It was hard to guess the child's gender because of the manner of dressing. Beyond the fact that such a style of clothing was completely out of fashion in 1969, it was also strange that they were wearing such heavy clothes in such cool weather. It also made no sense that the lady had her windows rolled up when she could have enjoyed the cool breeze. Elsie and Charlie pulled up to the car and were alarmed at the look of terror and panic on the lady's face. She looked completely distressed and looked back and forth as if she were lost or in dire need of assistance. Elsie called out to ask if she needed help, and she nodded yes. She seemed to be confused while studying Elsie's car. Older cars from the 1940s sat higher than those of the 1960s, like the one Elsie was driving. So the woman looked down at them. Perhaps because the lady had her windows rolled up, she seemed to be struggling to hear Elsie and Charlie. At some point, Elsie gestured for her to park at the side of the road 
and after repeating the gesture a few times, she seemed to understand. However, to their surprise and absolute shock, there was no sign of the lady when they halted at the side and turned to see her. She seemed to have disappeared from the road. Now, Highway 167 is an open road with nowhere to hide a car, so it was quite surprising that there was no sign of her or her car. She had vanished into thin air. Meanwhile, what added credibility to the story was that a vehicle behind the antique car stopped in front of them. The car's driver hurriedly came to their vehicle to ask what had happened to the car in front of him. He was so confused that he thought an accident had occurred between LC's and the antique car. The three men exchanged stories of what they had just witnessed. The third man, who had come from out of town, wanted them to go to the police because he believed it was a missing person's case. However, LC and his friend refused because they did not know where the lady and the child had gone or where they came from. The three exchanged numbers and addresses, and for years, they kept in touch to confirm that what they had seen was not just a figment of their imagination. It is yet to be explained whether the lady and her child were time travelers from 1940 or were forever stuck in limbo, appearing in different timelines but never returning to their own. While LC, his business partner, and the third man witnessed a time traveler from the past, these two newsmen witnessed a news story 11 years before it happened. Witnessing a news story 11 years before it actually happened. Authors Ron Edwards, C.B. Colby, and John Macklin, in the little giant book of eerie thrills and unspeakable chills, document the strange story of two men who witnessed an event 11 years before it happened. In 1932, reporter J. Bernard Hutton and photographer Joachim Brandt were working on a feature story, and for that reason, they were out covering the Hamburg shipyard in Germany. After finishing their mission, just as they were about to leave the building, they heard the sound of aircraft engines and looked up to find an astonishing sight of the sky full of fighter planes. The anti-aircraft batteries had come into action as bombs were being dropped and detonated. In a flash, the peaceful area had transformed into a full-blown war zone. Things were exploding everywhere, and buildings were crumbling on impact, leading to mayhem and death. Before running outside to save their lives, Hutton had asked a security guard if there was anything they could do to help, but was told to vacate the area immediately. Unsure of what was happening and afraid for their lives, the two men drove towards Hamburg. But as they got into Hamburg, they noticed that things had changed, the sky had cleared up, and everything was back to normal. The chaos and violence were completely gone, as though nothing had ever happened. The buildings that were supposed to have crumbled were perfectly fine, and no one seemed panicked. It was almost as if they had not just been running from massive airstrikes. When Hutton and Brandt looked behind towards the shipyard, they couldn't spot anything out of place. There was no damage, no smoke coming from the buildings, nothing. The two men reported the bizarre incident, but as expected, the newspaper office did not believe their tale, and who can blame them? Brandt, who had quickly shown the photos he had been taking during the attack, was shocked to see that everything appeared normal in them. Their co-workers did not believe them, dismissing their wild tale of woe. Shortly before the start of World War II, Bernard Hutton relocated to London. However, what he read in a newspaper one morning in 1943 left him in utter shock. He must have thought someone was playing a horrible prank on him. The story he was reading was very detailed about a Roy Air Force Squadron's successful raid on a Hamburg shipyard. It struck him as strange and uncanny because it was an exact recreation of what he and Brandt had witnessed 11 years ago. We've discussed accounts of people who happened to go through time or witness time travel without doing anything, but one man was very determined to make something out of his time travel experience. Traveling back in time to become an overnight Malonier. The Federal Bureau of Investigation arrested a man known as Andrew Carlson on January 28, 2003, on suspicion of insider trading. 
the suspicion was justified because, in just two weeks in the stock market, Andrew could go from having $800 to a staggering $350 million. He was said to have made 126 high-risk trades without breaking a sweat over a single penny. It was almost as if he had the Midas touch, as everything he touched seemed to turn to gold. Making the kind of profit he achieved in the stock market in such a short time was thought to be impossible. This made the Securities Exchange Commission extremely suspicious, and the FBI was called in to arrest and investigate him for fraud and insider trading allegations. Things took an unexpected turn when the FBI questioned him while he was in their custody. He told them he was a future man from 2256. He claimed that because he was from the future, he knew exactly how stocks would perform, which was why he could make so many profitable deals. Carlson also claimed to be able to prove his time-traveling powers by providing details about the whereabouts of the wanted terrorist Osama bin Laden and the treatment for AIDS. The cops did not think he was telling the completely natural truth. Although they believed he was kidding or lying, Andrew appeared to vanish completely from the face of the earth shortly after his release. Despite many efforts by the feds to locate him, every search turned empty. It is interesting to note that Andrew Carlson wasn't an overnight sensation. But strangely, his story starts with his unexpected appearance in the early 2000s. Before then, there were no records indicating that he was ever alive. He had no birth certificate, school records, medical records, driving license, or anything else. Many, however, have claimed that he could not have been a time traveler because he could convince the feds of that fact while he was under their custody. Some believe he was just a very good scam artist who could evade the government and anyone looking for him. However, here's an interesting fact. He correctly predicted the exact date of the U.S. invasion of Iraq. What are your thoughts about the man who successfully undertook time travel? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to see more videos.